2 Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 12. Second Peter chapter 1, starting with verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it's right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. As we heard His voice, which came from heaven, when we were with Him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed, as a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is by any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to turn now to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for all the things that have been taking place in this service today. And I pray that you will speak to our hearts in a special way. And Lord, I pray that the words that go forth, amen, they will be words, amen, of peace, words of harmony, powerful words, Lord God, that will minister in a powerful way, way because it's your word. And Lord, we just thank for everyone that took time out to be in this service today. And we pray that you'll continue to manifest yourself in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. I pray that the service today and this message today will find you well rejoicing in our Savior, Lord, and soon coming King. Yes, 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 yes. Let us agree together, church, on this fact. Being well. And hear what I'm saying. Being well does not exclude us from encountering problems of this life. Amen. Amen. The world, looking at it, it means by definition cosmos. Mm -hmm. Cosmos mm -hmm. is by definition an experience and it or its ordered system mm -hmm. is headed by Satan. Mm -hmm. Beginning at the time of man's fall in the Garden 
of Eden. Amen. So, that makes life in this world an uphill battle. Yes. Or, if you prefer, a world of contrary currents and riptides and occasionally hurricanes. Amen. However, somebody say however. However. We can confront all and all victoriously. Yes. Because in John chapter 4, verse 4, yes. it states that greater is he yes. that is in you and me Hallelujah. than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 All right, let's get to the story today. Let's get to the scripture. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15, he says, For this reason, I will not neglect to remind you always of those things the which you know and are established in the present truth. If you don't know some of those things, you'd have to read that whole chapter. Yes, yeah. Yes, he said in verse 13, I think it's right. As long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you. Yes. 14, knowing that shortly I'm going to put off this tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Now, Peter's message at this particular time becomes a swan song. You know what that means? One last act. Somebody talks about Amen. the swan song. That means one last act on this earth. The Apostle Peter was probably, he was probably more than 70 years of age at this time, he wanted very much to tell us something. And I want to share that with you. Three times, Three times, he tells us that he wanted us to be sure to remind us of it. Three times. Peter said that, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance. That's in verse 12. Yes, yes. In verse 13, Peter said, Yes, I think it's right. Or it me. As long as I am in this tabernacle, talking about his body. Yes, yes. To stir you up by putting you in, in remembrance. And then he said in verse 15, Peter said, Moreover, mm -hmm. I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease yes. mm -hmm. to have these things always in remembrance. Amen. Amen. Peter knew that his life on earth was coming to an end. Amen. His death was near at hand. And uh, he spoke of his demise. And he said, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me in verse 14, you see, this was a, an amazing prophecy which the Lord gave to Peter almost 40 years earlier. In John chapter 21, verses 18 and 19, Jesus told the apostle Peter he would grow old and that he would be martyred. He would be killed. For the gospel's sake. Peter probably, he wrote this passage of scripture probably uh, in AD 66 from a Roman prison doing 
the Christian persecution by the Emperor Nero. Peter was taken from prison by Roman soldiers and he was executed. Tradition suggests that he was crucified upside down because he pleaded not to be crucified like his Lord. It is clear that when Peter wrote 2 Peter, he knew that his death was imminent and that he was going to be martyred. So, believe me, when somebody's about to leave this world, you want to listen to their final words. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You want to listen to what perhaps they have to say. Amen. And what they have to say, Brother Cloud, has real meaning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And that was something that Peter wanted to be sure that we remembered. And he thought it was important because it was his swan song. His last act. I like this. Praise the Lord. In verses 16 through 18, let me read that again. He said, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, no, no. But we're eyewitnesses of His majesty. Glory we're going to talk about what that is in a minute. Glory. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to Him from the excellent glory. Hallelujah. But this is my beloved Son, yeah. in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Yeah. And we heard this voice, Peter said, mm -hmm. which came from heaven Glory. when we were with Him be. on the holy mountain. Oh, yes. Where? Let me ask the question, congregation. Where did the apostle get the message he was so burdened to communicate to his readers that he had to remind them three times in that one particular chapter? First, somebody say first. First. He wanted to provide one very important piece of information. That is, he wanted to share how he did not get his message. He said, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. In other words, cleverly invented stories. Amen. Amen. That's right. When we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's verse 16. Then he turned immediately from the negative to the positive. And he shared the source of his message. He said, but we, somebody say we, we. were eyewitnesses of his majesty in verse 16. Now another question I have for you is, who are the we? Who did not follow cunningly devised fables, but saw Jesus coming in power and glory. Well, in a context when the Lord was speaking to his disciples about his second coming, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, that last verse, mm -hmm. he said unto you, he said, Brother, brother, I say unto you, there will be some standing here which will not taste of death until you see the Son of Man coming in his glory. Amen. Amen. A coming in his kingdom. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says six days later. Somebody say six days six later. Days six days later. Days. Jesus took two of his, uh, three of his disciples. He took Peter, James, and yes. John. He took them up on this high mountain. This is in Matthew chapter 17, 1 through 9. Which I had time to read them. I'm going to travel on here. <laughs> the three are the weak. You ever ask yes, the question, yes. who were the we? The we was what? Peter, James, 
and John what he was referring to. Amen? Hallelujah. Peter was referring to who saw Jesus in power and glory. Amen. On the holy mountain, Jesus was transfigured before them. Amen. Now, that transfiguration, amen, Jesus' countenance changed. The Bible says, and his face did shine as the sun in its remnant. As white as the light. In verse 2 of chapter 17 of Matthew, Peter, James, and John were the fulfillment. Somebody say fulfillment. Fulfillment. Fulfillment of the Lord's teaching. Hallelujah. That they would see Jesus. Somebody say see Jesus. See Jesus. Coming, coming in his kingdom. In his kingdom. Before they died and long before he returned. Hallelujah. They were, think about it. Paul said he was caught up in the third heaven and he could not utter some things. Amen. And God put a thorn in his flesh so he would develop pride. He could, there's things that he just could not share. Hallelujah. Think about Peter, James, and John. Amen. 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 Before Jesus returned and before their died, Jesus just showed them some of his glory. Yes, yes, yes. They were unusually privileged to behold a preview of the coming attraction. That's just like Jesus. In other words, brothers and sisters, they saw. They saw the glory associated with Christ's second coming soon before it actually occurred. Amen. What privilege. Before it actually occurred, they were able to see His glory of the second coming. Now we know His first coming, He's not going to touch feet. And His feet is not going to touch the earth at a moment. Amen? Amen. At the sound of the trumpet. Amen. The twinkling of an eye. Amen. We, the body of Christ, amen, those that are alive and those that are in the grave are going to be caught up together to be with the Lord. Amen. Uh, he's coming back, but he's talking here about his second coming. When he comes back to the earth. Amen. There's all the glory that is associated with Christ's second coming before it occurred. And they heard the voice of God the Father saying, This is my beloved Son, whom I will bring. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Peter got all caught up. After he got back to his feet, they were very fearful. And we said that the other day, amen, on Wednesday. When you come in the presence of the glory of God, you're not going to keep, you're not going to keep your composure. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, amen. You're not going to keep your dignity. Amen. When God shows up in this glory, glory, amen, you're going to fall at his feet. You're going to be fearful. You're going to be in awe before So what we need to do, we need to stay on the mountaintop. We don't need to come down from this. Amen. We need to stay right here. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll construct a, a tent or tabernacle. And, and, and you know, and then the Lord God intervened and said, Do it, my beloved son. Here he is. Hallelujah. Peter got all caught up. Yes. I probably would have too. Yes. Amen. But you yes. got to come down off the mountain. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. And in verses 19 through 21, I like that. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as the light that shines in the dark place until the day dawn and the morning star rises in your heart. Amen. And then he goes, and knowing that this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God as they spoke. Yes, yes. As they were moved on by the Holy Spirit. Now remember now, Peter's an old man. 
He's about to be executed, and these are some of the things he's saying. I want you to keep that in the right perspective. Yeah. What, what is he saying here? What, what, in other words, what Peter is saying here, and I'm going I'm to show you this. Peter is saying, listen, Peter places the Word, the Word of God, amen, the prophetic Word of God above his own experience. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Above his own experience. Yes. Now, we in Pentecost, we get it backwards. Mm -hmm. We like to talk about our experiences, mm -hmm. amen, more than we talk about the Word. All right, yes. now. We are very emotional. Mm -hmm. We like to get excited. We enjoy our salvation. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. We like to shout. We like to jump. We like to run. Mm -hmm. And we like to show all of these emotions. And nothing wrong with it. I love Pentecost. Amen. Amen. But you see, you can be shallow inside. Amen. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It's not yes. always the external. That's no. right. It's not how how far you bounce off the wall. Mercy. 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 That's right. That's right. Amen. If you don't have Amen. nothing Amen. inside, it doesn't mean anything. Mercy. You're just doing calisthenics. But Peter, before he goes to his death, being hung upside down, he's saying, listen, Here's what he's saying. The Lord Jesus Christ in his Olivet Discord describes his coming with these words. Then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Somebody say great glory. Great glory. Uh, 24 and 30. This is precisely the same thing. Listen. This is the same thing that Peter, James, and John beheld on the Mount of Transfiguration. They beheld the God's glory and His power as it would be manifested at Christ's second coming. Hallelujah. Oh yes, we, amen, manifestation, the sister said. Look for manifestation. Yes. yes. God gives us manifestation a little bit of heaven. But I tell you what, it's not going to be, it's not going to be anything like the manifestation of Jesus Christ coming back at His second coming. The second point He was making, He was saying that the point He was making is this. This is in part. This is the gist of the message. The written word of prophecy is found in the Old and the New Testament is more authoritative. Somebody say authoritative. Then what we saw, what we saw on the Mount of Transfiguration. Think about that. You and I, if we, if we reason and, and think logically, we say, man, nothing like that to see the glory of God. Yes. I'd give anything. Oh, yes. Yes. This is what Peter's saying here. Yes. He's saying, look, the Word is more authoritative yes. than what we saw on Mount of Transfiguration. Yes. Now, what's the principle, Pastor, is this. The inspired Word of God always supersedes experiences. I'm just telling you like it is. You got that Word. Amen. It supersedes experiences. Now, don't get me wrong. Experiences are okay. Amen. All these things are okay if they confirm, they confirm the Word. Yes. Somebody say, the Word comes first. Yes. The Word comes first. Yes. The Word comes first. Yes. Yes. Now, I want to tell you something. When somebody comes to you and say that God told them, yes. I believe in visions, I believe in dreams. Yes. If they come to you and say, God told them, yes. Amen. I put it this way. I go to my Bible. I go to my Bible and see what they're saying. Line up. Somebody say.
say line up. Line up. Line up with the word. Line up with the word. If it doesn't make sense or line up with the word, amen, I let it go in one ear and out the other. Because they might have ate too much pizza last night. He said, we have a more sure word. Somebody say, a more sure word. More sure word. Sure word. Hallelujah. Prophecy. Whereunto you do well to take heed in verse 19 of 1, 2 Peter chapter 1. Hey, I like that. Yes. Hallelujah. In other words, Peter tells and says this in his old age. He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well Amen. To take heed. Hallelujah. He was referring to the Lord's second coming. Yes. At the point he was making is this. He said the written word of prophecy is found again on the Old and New Testament and more authority. Amen to that. The important principle again is the inspired word always supersedes. Yes. And when somebody tells us, amen, God told them it must line up with the word. Yes. I want you to repeat that. Amen. And also, Peter instructs us, and I'm coming down to the end. He instructs us with these words. He said, first of all, knowing this first, yes. that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Amen. That's the reason we have so, so many occult and false religions. Somebody always, you know, they go to the mountaintop. And they say that God, I don't know which God they talk about, have shown them something. And they come back down in the valley and they want to change things. They want, amen, there's some kind of great guru. Some kind of, well, Jesus warned us of those kind of people. He said, beware of false prophets. Amen. Those that, amen, want to stir you wrong. That's the reason, one of the reasons he sent the Holy Spirit that will lead and guide us into all truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just wasn't really saying in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, he said, that is, no prophecy originates in the mind of one man. Amen. 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 Well, the question you may have then, is where does it come from? Well, I want to tell you, the prophet provides us with the answer. Yes. Powerful scripture. I would have it circled, underlined in my Bible if I were you. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty-one. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God. Faith is they were moved. Holy oh, yes, they were moved what? By the Holy Ghost. They moved along by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Men wrote the word by being inspired, motivated, moved by the Holy Ghost. I close. The emphasis Peter was trying to make is this. Jesus is coming again. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. He's coming soon. Soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. No more die. No more cry. No more disappointment. We're going to see the king. 
Hallelujah. Soon and very soon.